with the Fed continuing to raise rates, which has been a calendar year now since they've been doing so, one of the things they always say, or one of the things speculated about is, well, until something breaks, well, stuff's definitely broken. Um, right. we've, we've got some major things happening here, and we're going to get into what we think the Fed is going to do next week at FOMC. That's coming up. But um, we are seeing this now. So what do you make of what's going on with SVB? And how shocked were you at the depegging of USDC? I know you kind of um, had to get in and make some moves a little bit when it, whenever it happened, as much as you want to talk about with that. But yeah, what do you make of all this? So, so I think the first problem is that we have, um, it's kind of well known, it's called Operation Choke Point. Um, there are institutions out there that are trying to limit <clears throat> the on-ramping of, of crypto. Um, they're trying to make it difficult. Uh, so by by shutting some of these banks down that hold a lot of capital um, from major players, um, they're definitely trying to choke them out. Now, mm -hmm. you know, you have all the FDIC stuff that's insured up to $250,000, which is, you know, fine and dandy. But a lot of these people had way more than that. You know, we're talking, you know, millions of several millions of dollars in there um now will they get bailed out fully who knows like that's yet still yet to to be seen i i think they'll get the majority of it back um uh, but you still see stocks down for jp morgan you see chase you see all these other banks are going down too they're they're the stocks plummeted today again um people are losing faith uh in in the government in the federal reserve in all the system the system itself is breaking uh the game that they were playing uh which was the game that you know um ftx and some of these other things that failed uh the banks are doing a very similar thing with the long-term treasury bonds um and, and the more that they raise the rates the less less yield that they're making on on the products that the government are saying here you should buy these um and, and you know get rewards rewarded that way so you know as as they keep raising rates these systems are going to fail at the same time i think this is kind of a way for them to expedite um the cbdc's into play here saying, well, guys, you can't trust the banks. Why don't you bank yourself and use our new central bank digital currency where you can spend it without bank's approval. You can do whatever you want. I can just totally see this coming as a narrative. Um, yeah. Make it hard to get into crypto. They'll limit who you can and can't exchange with once it's in the system. Um, and on-ramping and off-ramping could get very difficult. So um, I do know some of the best ways even when the dollar was depegging uh were some of these credit cards debit card slash services that some of these places offer uh they were still honoring the the one dollar peg so luckily you know people had that option uh you, you did bring up and i had mentioned to you i had you know i had fifteen hundred dollars or so in usdc while that was why it started um, and I just quickly just bought Hex. I figured that was my best. You right. Know, why not? Seems like that's what there. a lot of people did. A lot of well, people yeah. did that. A lot of people bought Bitcoin. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I caught that around, I don't know what it was, six cents or something like that. Um, and was, you know, fine with it. That's where it would have gone anyway. Um, but we saw a lot of movement. I, I, I wasn't too worried about it not coming back like i didn't think it would just lose its peg and fall um i just right. didn't know how long it would take to actually get back to that point um apparently whenever the banks opened on monday they moved some money around and they they got the peg back um some other weird stuff is happening too though because you see cz uh moved a bunch of money out of the binance us the busd token mm -hmm. um I don't know that it has purchased anything yet still, uh, but there's a billion dollars sitting there um, where he claimed he was going to move it into Bitcoin, Ethereum, and some of the other uh, coins. I think he said Ripple too. Uh, so 
again, who knows? It's it, it, it's one of those things where you just have to really uh, have faith in, in what you're doing. Um, never really had a whole lot of faith in the stables. You know, we've always kind of worried right. about Tether. Uh, we've always worried about BlackRock's injection of the USDC. They could really do what they want with it at any given time. Um, but there's enough people that use it. I think it could cause, you know, a lot of trouble for them if they decided to do that. So, you know, it, we got through it. Um, we'll see how it goes moving forward. I do know the sacrifice address for Pulse Chain um, moved a lot of USDC into Dai. Um, hmm. Dai was, you know, it's backed by several things, even though it's thirty percent backed by USDC. Right. You know, still 70% of other stuff. So, you know, a little bit less risky. Um, and when that repegged, I believe that amount that was moved over made a profit of about $3 million. <laughs> to be, to wow. be honest with you, just when it, as it repegged back to the dollar. So pretty, pretty interesting stat there. Hexpassiveincome.com. My friend Crypto Coffee has created what I think is probably the best course for a new cryptocurrency investor. Not only that, but these courses usually charge an arm and a leg. Crypto Coffee is only charging $200. I think right now he actually has a discount for $150. I have a link below in the description. If you are new to crypto, do not understand Hex and how it works, click the link below. It's a quick, easy course. He only gives you the basics. I personally, myself, have thought about creating an intro to crypto course in the past. I don't think there's any reason to do so because Matt Crypto Coffee has already taken care of that. And I don't think anything needs to be added by anybody else. So check it out. The link is in the description and sign up to Hex Passive Income today. Let's. I want to focus a bit more on the stablecoin thing because I think you brought up a great point. You did say that you know you and I have kind of always preached and and just believed ourselves anyway. Um, not that we necessarily. I, I think I actually have been more adverse to them than, than you have even. But like um, that we don't rely on them that much and know that this risk is out there. Yeah. Now, while this has to do more so with once again legacy financial systems muddying up crypto, not necessarily crypto itself, um, you know, with what's happened with USDC. Tether has had, you know, FUD dating back, you know, er basically every market cycle. And I just don't think it's a wise idea. And I, I know you agree with this. And, you know, for anybody watching, um, you know, you can do what you want. It's not necessarily investment advice, but it's how I would handle, you know, dry powder cash on the side. I never have it sitting in stables. I shouldn't say never. Like if I, in the past when I have taken profits on something um, and I know that I'm going to redeploy it in a matter of what I think is weeks or less, you know, that this is a number that you feel comfortable with. Like whatever that amount, amount of money is for you that you're okay leaving in stables for a while, I'll let sit in USDC, like in my wallet or whatever, before I'm ready to to swap it out again. But I'm not like, you know, when I have a huge lump sum buying USDC and letting it sit there for months on end before I deploy it. I mean, first off, yeah, I'll let you give your opinion on that, Ewok. I mean, like, how would you go about that? And in, and in lieu of doing that with your dry powder, what are some best practices you've done instead? I think moving it in and out of USD, um, mm -hmm. it, if you already have it there, um, that's a much safer move. Um, I, I think if you're Coinbase or your Gemini or your Kraken, um, you can move things in and out of USD where it is still USD. Right. You don't have to withdraw it. You don't have to do anything. Um, and it's not like you're waiting for it to clear either. So that would be, I think, a better play than um, a stable coin. Uh, it, depending on how long it's going to be. Like you said, if it's a week or two or a couple of weeks, whatever you think it might be, um, USDC or um, I've heard a lot of people talking about the true USD as well. Um, apparently that is backed by um, different commodities that are um, in a escrow account and not so much 
it's not related to crypto um, as more it is the escrow uh, that it's tied to. So for some banks that don't even like um, crypto to begin with, if you can get it into true, true USD, that wire doesn't really show that it's a crypto. Um, pretty cool. I know Funding Jim talks about it a lot. Um, so it may be a play that I start to use. Um, and because it is an escrow account more than a crypto account, um, it may hold a better peg. So moving forward, that's an option for us to, you know, to look into. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I wouldn't sit through a whole bear market. Um, like if you're going to take profits as it's rising and you want to hold it for the next, you know, downturn in the cycle, whatever it may be, that's a long time. I, I would suggest putting it into, um, I don't know, USD. <laughs> yeah, you know, the value of USD is your spending power decreases the longer we wait too. So it's one of those really weird things where you flip a coin, uh, which is going to lose value more. And um, mm -hmm. you know, honestly, if you're long term minded, something like Hex that does produce yield even when it's going down, you know, turns into a lot more on the next run. So. Uh, that's kind of my play. Um, I don't let things sit around too much. If I'm going to, if I need them, I'm going to use them. Uh, I'm going to pull them out and use them, but I'm not going to just pull it aside and just have it sit there, uh, especially, you know, with the product that we have in, in Hex. Well, yeah. And I think that's something a lot of people saw with this incident last week is like, you know, I would rather just put it in the actual cryptocurrency or the token instead of holding, you know, stable coins. But right. I agree with you a hundred percent on the USD thing. Like when I want to DCA a cash of, or yeah, a, uh, you know, whatever, a, a bag of money or whatever, I go to the exchange of my choice, um, funnel it over and, yeah, I just let it sit in USD and kind of DCA into whatever I want to DCA into. And it's always a sum that I'm not going to leave even in USD just sitting on an exchange for a long time either. I just right. don't see the need other than a quick utility. And I, I made a video about this like three months ago. I just reposted it when the depegging of the USDC happened last week. I like to use the stable coins purely as a utility. You know, USDC is the biggest liquidity pair with HEX, you know, and obviously that's the, the main thing that people have bought HEX with um, historically. And yeah, so th th there's use to it and everything, obviously. But I'm with you. I would just much rather not even hold stables at all. And the other thing is, too, if you and I get your point about like just buying the crypto, whether that be HEX or whatever it is you're into, I, I, and I, I'm with that. I understand that. But obviously also now HEX earns yield clearly. But if you really are, you know, you see the volatility of this this market. Hex, for as amazing it is, was down ninety five percent too. Yeah. You want to take advantage of prices. You know what I mean? You you do want to DCA in when you get, you know, if you see that something's in a downtrend, you want to DCA in optimally. I think it's a pretty good idea, and I talked about this in that USDC video. Um, I, I think it's a good idea to have multiple. <laughs> banks, uh, not a great thing to be saying right now, but like, uh, you know, multiple banks that you trust. And I say multiple, so you are differentiated. You want plenty right. of off ramps. And just especially in an environment like this with interest rates up so much, you're getting uh, the least paltry amount of an APY and a high yield savings fund that you could get in a long time right now. I mean, you can get almost 4%. Yeah, I understand it's not really 4% at the end of the day with inflation and all these other things we're adjusted for. But instead of totally just letting it sit there like in an exchange where it's in danger as well and not likely earning very much yield, I don't mind having it spread out across a couple banks like that. And then when I'm ready to pull the trigger, I just pull it out of there. You know, yep. that's, that's what I've always been a fan of doing. So, Well, and the one thing uh, we, d we discussed this the other day, uh, you and I did about the liquidity. Um, it, mm. it used to be the majority was USDC, but when that happened, uh, a lot of liquidity got pulled, um, and it ended up being ETH hex was th there was just as much there um, as there was on USDC. So, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Don't use the stable coins. You know, we we talk a lot about not leaving money on an exchange. You know, get in, do your business, get out. Um, I, I kind of equate that to the stable coins as well. Uh, you know, you use yeah. them for what you need. 
um, and, and you get out of them. So I just don't like having stuff sit around like that t- too long because usually you are keeping it. Well, you can keep it in your MetaMask wallet or, or whatever it may be, um, but much safer than sitting in a Coinbase or a um, Kraken or something like that. 